heat culture. We hear that all the time coming from heat fans, coming from the organization itself. But what does that really mean? What does heat culture mean? What does it mean to have the structure that they have? Well, they attached a name to it. They attached a slogan to it. But at the end of the day, I think it's what every basketball team that isn't overwhelmingly talented, and that's not to take a shot at Miami because Miami has talent. I'm talking about like, you know, Shaq Kobe talented or Golden State Warriors 2017 talented, like a Bulls 90s talented. Oh, most of the time, that's that's not how the NBA works. It might be that's how every franchise should build their organization. Pat Riley, the godfathers they call him, the evil genius as I call him, just finding the right pieces to put in the place to, 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 to put together the puzzle for Eric Spolstra to put out on the floor. I mean, last night, you have guys like uh, uh, this kid who played uh, the other night in Game 5, you Haywood Highsmith, who, play, again, he played, they only scored two points last night, played really well in Game 5, earned minutes to be put in this, in this chance to put in this opportunity to, to, to make it happen. Again, Caleb Martin, who, you know, Jimmy's my guy. I think Caleb Martin should have been the MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. I really do. I mean, what he averaged, like 20 points a game or something, around 20 points a game on like 60% shooting. Like he was great in this series. I'm, I'm not mad at Jimmy getting it because I love Jimmy. And you could argue, hey, they gave it to Jimmy just for the fact that he kind of helped get them, kind of helped, kind of carried them to this point, And then it was the role players who stepped up in the Eastern Conference Finals. I understand that. But Pat Riley finding these undrafted players, finding the guys that fits with the culture, finding guys that fit with playing hard every night, playing great defense, playing patient, good offense, passing up good shots for great shots. You have Eric Spolster, who's now the second longest tenured head coach in the NBA to Greg Popovich. This is his 12th, no, 13th year in Miami. Again, having guys ready to play night in, night out. I mean, again, is there any tougher position as a coach to be in than after that game six? As far as an individual playoff series, your team's up 3-0, feeling themselves as they should be. You lose game four, game five. You're like, okay, got game six at home. We'll close that then. And not only do you lose, you lose in the fashion that they did. How many coaches have their team ready to play? And not just ready to play, ready to come out and dominate Boston the following night. That's Eric Spolstra. There was a lot of talk around the heat talking about how after game six was over, he came in with a very positive, we're going to get them in game seven attitude. Jimmy Butler sort of uh, mirrored that same sort of confidence in the post-game presser. Again, having your team ready to play night in and night out. That's Eric Spolstra. Again, I talked about, and I gave Joe, Maz Joe Mazzulla credit, and I'm not a big Joe Mazzulla guy, and I don't want to be brutal on him because the fact is he shouldn't should not have been in this position because Will Hardy, who was the assistant coach of the Celtics, got hired by the Utah Jazz. Okay, and then you have the Ime Odoka situation. So all of a sudden, you got Joe Mazzulla who's just put in this position out of nowhere. But one thing I gave Joe Mazzulla credit for for the Celtics coming back to tie the series is keeping the team morale high, keeping the spirits high. Eric Spolster did the same thing. I would even argue to a greater extent. Because this is game seven. This is your season on the line. You are arguably on the verge of the worst choke job in NBA history. And you didn't blink. It's a credit to Pat Riley for putting the pieces together. Eric Spolstra, night in and night out, having the guys ready to play. Steve Kerr is a great saying. He might have stole it from Greg Popovich, but I've heard Steve Kerr say it numerous times, so I'll quote him as saying it. In the NBA, 10% of coaching is X's and O's. The other 90% is managing personalities. Does anybody do that as well as Eric Spolstra? I would argue no. And then lastly, as he's been called in recent days, Hemi Butler. You know, because he got the I'm him sort of thing on social media. Jimmy Butler, playoff Jimmy, as he's become known over the past few years since he joined the Miami Heat. You know, we talk about guys who we go into the playoffs and we're like, can they... Can they be as consistent? I'm talking about great players. Can they be as consistent in the playoffs as they are in the regular season? Because we know it might as well be a different sport in the playoffs. It's officiated differently. It's coached differently. The pace is different. The pressure is different. The energy from the home and road courts are different. Might as well be a different sport. Who elevates? Who stays the same? Who gets worse? Could we make the case that as far as current players... Not talking about NBA history, not talking about guys 10 years ago. I'm talking about right now. Could I make the case that Jimmy Butler is 
the only player in the NBA who gets substantially better. I'm talking about of star to superstar players who get substantially better in the playoffs. You could make that case for Nikola Jokic this year, who is going to be facing the finals, obviously. But when you talk about what Jimmy Butler has done this postseason, similar to Eric Spolstra, instilling confidence in this franchise, instilling confidence in his teammates night in, night out, getting guys involved, getting his own shot, playing excellent defense, big hustle plays. He had three steals last night. That's who Jimmy Butler has been over the course of his career. And I remember talking before carving it up live was even carving it up live. It was just carving it up back at the, back at the time during the bubble when the Heat made the finals, won the East. I remember talking about on this show and they actually beat these same Boston Celtics in six games. Jimmy's in Chicago. Oh, he's a problem in the locker room. They move off from him. How's that goes Chicago been since? You got the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, Minnesota. Oh, 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 my goodness. Jimmy is too hard on Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. And he left, and what's Minnesota been since? They traded Wiggins, who went to a better culture and has thrived, and Carl Anthony Towns looks like he's probably going to be that way out, on the way out the door as well, and Minnesota is as poorly run a franchise as we have in professional sports. Oh, Philadelphia, and this is the ultimate gaffe. Oh, my goodness. We cannot deal with Jimmy. We cannot give him that, that max extension to make him a part of our future. We are going to hand the franchise to Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris. And how has that worked for Philadelphia? They yet still have yet to get to an Eastern Conference Finals. Ben Simmons is no longer with the team for good reason. Tobias Harris has been a massive disappointment when you look at what he's getting paid by Philadelphia. And Joel Embiid, let's be honest, not a playoff player. And Jimmy Butler just completed his third Eastern Conference Finals in four years, and has the Miami Heat, a stable culture, a great culture, in position to win an NBA Finals in his second NBA Finals in four years. That's part of why I love the fact that these two teams are on this stage. We talk about talent. We talk about pieces that fit. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the culture that matters. It's why Golden State won the championship last year. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.